The session that is on our agenda now is powered by YOL Group, and the topic of discussion is creating a robust electric mobility ecosystem in India from producing affordable and innovative batteries and battery packs to enhancing charging infrastructure and enforcing favorable regulations. India is progressing in the production and technology of electric vehicles as we all know. The electric vehicle supply chain, while not yet fully established, a rapidly evolving market. EV battery pack production, a key component, involves assembling individual cells into modules and arranging these modules into battery packs to power a vehicle. Currently, the country faces a shortage of crucial raw materials for batteries and relies on imported cells. However, for batteries, with ongoing efforts and strategic investments in local cell manufacturing facilities, India is on the path to becoming more self-sufficient, increasing the green energy generation capacity and establishing a reliably nationwide charging network. India is moving forward. The discussion will focus on the current status trends and future potential of electric mobility in India. It will explore the challenges and opportunities in embracing electric mobility, focusing on raw material availability, battery cell charging infrastructure. The discussion will also cover the role of the government in promoting electric vehicle adoption in India. I am very intrigued and so looking forward to this session now. I am sure we are going to learn a lot and we are going to be more enlightened at the end of the, this discussion. And without further ado, to take this session forward, let me call upon stage our esteemed moderator, Mr. Milan Rosina, Principal Analyst, Power Electronics and Battery. A huge round of applause for Mr. Milan Rosina, ladies and gentlemen. That's not all. We have one more esteemed moderator who will be felicitating this entire session. For that, I would like to call upon stage Dr. Shalu Agarwal, Senior Technology and Market Analyst, Power Electronics, YOL Intelligence, part of YOL Group. Please take a seat, ma'am. Thank you so much. To join our esteemed moderators, the first panelist that I would like to call upon stage is Mr. Apurv Shaligram, who's the co-founder and CEO, ETRNL Energies. The next panelist that I would like to call upon stage is Mr. Satwinder Singh Sabharwal, who's the director, India Sales and Marketing, Inovi. Let the claps on, ladies and gentlemen, come on. Thank you so much. The next panelist that I would like to invite on stage is Mr. Karthik Ganesh, Director Battery Systems, Turner. And last but not the least, our final panelist, Mr. Vishal Ahuja, who is the co-founder, Techlands. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are lucky to have one more panelist joining our discussion today, which is Dr. Neeraj Kumar Singhal. I would like to invite Dr. Neeraj Kumar Singhal on stage, who is the founder, Semco Group, Lithium Ion Cell and Battery Manufacturing and Testing Solutions. A huge round of applause for Dr. Singhal here, ladies and gentlemen. And now, without further ado, let me hand over the baton of this session to our esteemed moderators, Dr. Shalu and Mr. Milan here. The stage is all yours. Thank you so much. I am your host, Manu, signing off for now. Thank you, Manu, for the nice introduction. So hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Shalu Agrawal, and I am the moderator of this session. And I work as a CDN analyst in Yoi Group. And here I am with Dr. Milan Rosina, the co-moderator, and he is a principal analyst in Yoi Group. So before we start the session, I would like to uh, like introduce our company. Uh, I will give you a short introduction. So Milan and I work for Yol Group, which is a ma market and technology research company and uh, based in France, but we have worldwide presence like in US, 
Europe and Asia with more than 180 collaboration. So here you see our expertise. So we work on semiconductor industry. Semiconductor industry means we try to cover almost everything like semiconductor devices, semiconductor packaging, equipment, supply chain, compound semiconductors, as well as we cover batteries. And here you can see our three core activities. So first, we publish market and technology res uh, research uh, reports every year. Second is tear down and uh, cost uh, analysis. For that, you know, we take some systems like inverters, converters, mobile, laptops, and all. We tear down, we analyze all the components of the system and also analyze the cost of those systems. And third is performance uh, comparison, like electric and electro optical uh, systems, and we compare the properties of those systems. So here, yeah. Uh, right now, you know, we, we everybody know that everywhere worldwide, all the countries are trying to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. And the best way to reduce the carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide emission is to uh, promote electric vehicle and to reduce the use of ICE vehicles. And so for that, different, different countries are planning to ban ICE. Some countries are planning to ban fully or some partially. Uh, different, different countries have different timeline. For example, in India, Indian government is also aiming for 30% uh, of new vehicle to be electric by 2023. Yeah? So all the countries, they have different timelines. And as uh, countries are planning to ban IC vehicles and promoting electric vehicles, so here you can see the market of electric vehicle. In 2023, there were around uh, 15 million, million unit of electric vehicle were sold and now we are expecting that by 2029 around 40 million units uh, there will be around 40 million unit uh, uh, market for electric vehicle and as electric vehicle market is growing so of course the battery market will also grow so based on this electric vehicle market we are expecting that battery pack market will reach up to 188 billion dollars by 2029 the market will reach around $40 million. But actually, in the past, we were expecting much more sale of electric vehicles here. Yeah? So the sale of electric vehicle is much less than expected. And there could be many reasons for the slowdown of electric vehicle. First reason is the high cost of electric vehicles. So even though we see that cost of electric vehicle is going down, but still, if you compare electric vehicle with ICE vehicles, uh, electric vehicles are still very expensive. And if you want to reduce the cost of electric vehicles, then the best thing is to make them, you know, like to use small battery packs, and which will again impact on the overall battery pack market. The second uh, reason for the slowdown of electric vehicle market is uh, anxiety related to charging. You know, like, uh, do we have enough charging infrastructure, charging time and all, like we are going for vacation and what if we don't find a charger to charge electric vehicle or how long will it take to charge every electric vehicle so there are you know, customers still have this kind of anxiety and these are the general challenges but all the countries they may have some different challenges like in india india is different from the western countries yeah europe and asia so in this discussion we will uh, talk about uh, how india can grow in electric vehicle market what are the main drivers, what are the trends, and what are the challenges we are facing right now. So, but before we start the discussion, I would request our esteemed panelists to introduce yourself. So, uh, Satpinder, can you start from yourself? Hi, good morning, everyone. I would first of all start by thanking uh, the Battery Show, the Yol Group who are the organizers of this panel discussions, and uh, all my battery industry colleagues for giving an opportunity to me and Innovi organization that I represent to be part of this panel discussion. I bring into the panel my 20 years of experience with automotive as well as industrial businesses. I, in my current role of Director Sales and Marketing at Innovi, I have the opportunity to engage with most of the OEMs in two-wheeler, three-wheeler and four-wheeler space to understand their battery technology needs of today and the future and accordingly work internally to bring solutions which add value to shareholders as well as to the customers. About the organization that I represent, Innovi, formerly known as Interplex, 
we are leveraging our 60 years of precision stamping manufacturing technologies along with the domain knowledge of automotive electronics to bring in customized cell contacting systems for the battery. So in a battery you have cells, so the entire contacting system for the cells, customize integrated solutions for power connections and for signal connections. So looking forward to a very healthy panel discussions of what are the challenges and how we can promote electronic electric vehicle industry. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thanks Shalu and Milan for inviting us to the uh, moderated panel. Uh, my name is Karthik Ganesh. I've spent the last 17 years in the battery space, uh, working across cell engineering, material modeling and simulation, uh, some PMS uh, algorithms as well in lithium ion batteries as well as solid state battery companies. And uh, ever since my move to India, I transitioned to pack engineering, worked a lot on pack engineering, both for uh, vehicle batteries, swappable batteries, as well as stationary batteries. Now I'm kind of leveraging all my experience, no longer with Turno, starting my own company, uh, into battery uh, intelligence platform creation, so that uh, more of uh, an idea is generated for people about how their uh, batteries are behaving in the vehicle, and also creating a circular economic solution for uh, repurposing batteries. Thanks. Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, thanks to the Battery Show as well as uh, uh, Shalu and Milan for uh, inviting us over here. Uh, I'm Apoor Shaligram. I'm uh, the co-founder of Eternal Energy. So uh, I've actually spent the last 15 years, 16 now, in the space of battery tech, working all the way from uh, battery materials, battery architectures, fabrication, technology. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, spent the last 16 years working across different aspects of uh, battery cell technology, all the way from materials to uh, fabrication technology, manufacturing, uh, across academia and uh, startups mostly, I won't say industry, but startups mostly. Uh, currently at Eternal, we are developing a completely new manufacturing technology for battery cells. Uh, two focuses, the first one being uh, we want to make better cells that can charge faster, uh, safely, and uh, get better life. The other focus being improving manufacturing. So uh, we want to make manufacturing a lot more efficient in terms of energy, and also very uh, compact and scalable. So yeah, that's, that's what uh, we're doing at Eternal. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I hope I'm audible, loud and clear. So thank you, Battery Show and uh, Yole Group for this wonderful opportunity uh, to represent ourselves and to a very insightful discussion what we'll be having today with all the panelists and with all of you today. Uh, I'm Vishal Ahuja. I'm co-founder and CEO of Techlands. Uh, so I'm IT Delhi alumni. I uh, worked with Mahindra for around a decade. Then I had another startup on a three-wheeler. Uh, I was co-founder and CTO, then worked with another company now this tech lens where we're working on EV ecosystem because over the more than a decade, we observed that as a country, when we have to evolve, we have to focus on ecosystem, not on individual solutions. So that's what we are doing at, at tech lens. So we are providing engineering services, uh, technology supports, as well as product development support, software solutions, as well as customized training programs. So even if you don't want to take engineering services, you can, we can upskill your own team. So that is an ecosystem which has to evolve because as a country, when we have to evolve, every engineer, every business has to evolve technically as well, right? They should be having the know-how. So either uh, by engineering services or products or by training. So we are focusing on our ecosystem completely. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Hello everybody. I am Neeraj Kumar Singhal from Semco Infratech Private Limited. And thank you for inviting me on this panel. And we provide the solutions for battery pack assembly and battery testing. And we are majorly focusing on providing the better solutions or the efficient solutions and empowering all these battery pack manufacturers to manufacture the batteries, which can derive more productivity, more life and more safer batteries. Thank you. I will also introduce myself. So my name is Milan Rosina and I'm co-moderating this session with Dr. Shalom. So maybe we can start with the general questions that what are the main trends and drivers for 
electric vehicle market growth in India, and I think everybody can say a small, you know, um, lines about this. The main drivers and trends related to electric electric vehicle market in India. So can we start from uh, now, like Neeraj? So I think the electric vehicle market means major driver for the electrical vehicle market means most people just for <laughs> vanity sake says the clean energy or this thing but means what we think commercially is because it gives you more power in times of means like if we seize the two wheelers or we seize the three wheelers it is most cost effective. So the consumer are more inclined towards the most cost, cost effective solution. If it will remain, remain most cost effective, then the cons consumers will move towards it. Uh, so, from the driver perspective, uh, what I strongly believe the government initiatives which are there are the strong drivers because as a consumer, my mode of transportation is only for like, okay, I have to travel from one location to another. And at what cost and what convenience I can travel. So, the government initiative like subsidies like PM2 was there, then now your e-drive subsidies are there. That is very important to drive the growth at a large scale. A classical example when the last year when the PM2 subsidy was reduced on two-wheeler, there was a sudden dip on the two-wheeler sales, right? So these are the incentives and the government schemes. You can directly correlate the relation between these two things. Now, it, uh, as soon as this e-drive scheme recently launched by the government, there was a sudden rush in everyone excitement in the complete ecosystem of EV. This is, I believe, when things has to go on a large scale, government initiatives or government subsidies and uh, PLI schemes like those schemes are very much important to drive the large scale growth which is needed for the country growth on the EV mobility. This is from my side. Um, I would actually add to that, right? So the government initiatives, the schemes, yes, it helps when it comes to sales, but it's also the word of mouth, you know, the uh, people need to know about electric vehicles and that's a very top-down approach where the government has been pushing information about electric vehicles, that's also important. The other one I would say is on a very personal, you know, a bottom-up word of mouth. You ride an electric vehicle, you drive an electric car or you simply you know, sit in one, you're a passenger in one, the experience is such that you don't want to go back to uh, a petrol or a diesel car. So I would say three things. So the first one is more research. I think what India is doing right now is just kind of aping the Western uh, products and making it in India, which is good. But again, catering the products to the Indian market for the Indian drivers, for the Indian ambient conditions, that's very crucial. Second is, of course, the follow-up uh, thing would be testing standards. So you create a new product, you test it properly as well, so that you quell some of the concerns that customers have. And third is basically what I'm very, very invested in, is data. So you create a product, you do a lot of research, but then when, once it is in the field, you need to be able to give a lot of insights to the customers, because customers are still transitioning from the petrol or diesel vehicles to electric vehicles. So one needs to inform them how to use it, how to charge it, how to store it. So that becomes very important. Thank you. And I think my job has made much simpler thanks to the summary my colleagues have already done. I would uh, put this into buckets or I'll try to summarize what my friends have said. Uh, I'll, I'll bucketize into two. Non-monetary drivers and monetary drivers. What are the non-monetary drivers? Is the government initiatives. We all know the amount of dependency on forex we have to run the transport industry in India. We are heavily dependent on dollars on forex to run the transport industry. So the government and we as citizens of the country need to be independent of this need of crude and hereby you know, survive on our internal India regional energy needs. Second, I would say within the monet non-monetary needs, it's, it's disheartening to see that out of top 15 most polluted cities, five of them are from India. It's really disheartening. I think it's, it's real time that everybody, including the citizens and the government, have realized that we need to get to cleaner sources of energy, cleaner sources of transportation. So that's the non-monetary side of it. Besides that, once I look at the monetary side of it, there are a lot of things that are being done to promote EVs, which are the drivers of EVs, including 
the production based PLI schemes that the government is bringing has already brought in to promote production, local production of EVs. Demand based incentives that the government is giving in terms of lower GST, in terms of fame and now the PM drive scheme. So these are the monetary schemes as well, which are all together supporting the growth of EVs in India. Thank you. So, uh, for, you know, for any electric vehicle, the most important or the heart of electric vehicle is cells and battery pack. And uh, as Neera said that the cost is the key in India. So, Apur, I want to know that, you know, like in any electric vehicles that cells and battery packs are important. And the performance is really important. Yeah, yeah, I know the cost is very, very important, but at the same time that high performance is, you know, we, we need and in like, you know, the country like India, highly populated country and all, in that case, the performance and cost both are equally important. So what type of cells and battery packs do we use right now in India to, you know, manage both cost as well as the performance? Uh, so it's not just the cost and the performance, right? In India, we are actually having conditions, environmental conditions, climatic conditions, which are much harsher for the battery pack as compared to the rest of the world. So we need battery technology that is tuned for Indian applications, Indian conditions as well, not just... So what we have seen over the last decade is we have primarily been importing battery cells. Irrespective of what chemistry it is, we have been importing battery cells. And more often than not, these cells have been designed for uh, those countries, right? So they're not designed for the Indian uh, 35, 40 degrees C temperature. They are designed for like 20, 25 degrees C temperature. So we see that batteries die out faster. So it's not just a question of at what cost do we get it? How long does it last as well, right? Uh, people are used to buying a car and then using it for 15 years in this country. Uh, we cannot have electric vehicles coming in where the battery is lasting two years, three years, and so on. Now, of course, we have seen uh, over the past decade that improvements have been made. Now you have uh, electric, at least two-wheeler manufacturers, we are giving like a five years warranty, eight years warranty on the batteries, which instills some sense of confidence as well, right? Uh, but then again, I mean, if you're talking in terms of chemistry, if you're talking in terms of format, it's still an evolution, it's still an uh, evolving curve. Uh, but yes, we do need batteries which are much higher performance and uh, uh, higher reliability from the Indian perspective. So Another important factor is uh, to cost and performance is also safety of the battery. We speak about the harsh environment in India, high temperature, dust uh, in the air, so it can uh, bring some problems to the cooling system in the battery and so on. So uh, either we speak about the battery chemistries, either we will develop the specific chemistries or use specific chemistries for India, or we will uh, use the same battery chemistries that are produced in high volumes and therefore at lower cost. And we will implement some safety feature into the battery pack. And so we can maybe add some sensors, some temperature sensors, some monitoring into the battery pack. So I'd like to hear about some innovations that we can find in this field, maybe from uh, Mr. Sand, uh, Satpinder. I would say yes. I mean, uh, with the trends that are going around, a lot of advanced functionalities are getting added into the battery systems. And obviously the components which gets fitted onto the entire battery systems. We at Innovi, we see the demand coming in from the OEMs, from the Giga factories for advanced functionalities in multiple ways. For example, one of the demand that we see emerging is the entire battery system being immersed in a liquid cooling medium to improve the cooling mechanism of the entire battery. So as, as, as component suppliers for battery systems, we then need to design our systems to, you know, uh, the material selections to match up with the cooling medium. Another feature, another demand that we see coming in from OEMs is about more amount, more number of sensors, safety sensors into the systems. Traditionally, or even today, I would say most of the sensors that are required on the battery pack they are mainly your temperature, your voltage sensors at this moment of time. But uh, there is a growing need for additional data 
from the cells to be ex extracted. As a component system developer, we then are able to add more sensors into the FPC, into the flexible control panel of the battery contacting systems and hereby add more functionality into the system. There is also a growing trend of evolution from cell to pack, pack to module and module to chassis design. Now over there, the functionality of the cell contacting system, which traditionally was only electrical conductivity, is now evolving beyond electrical conductivity to also mechanical stability or mechanical support, structural support to the entire battery pack. So these are few of the advanced functionalities we see as an emerging trend from our customers' expectations from the battery pack. Thank you. So actually in cells, cell performance and safety, everything is equally important. So Neeraj, how can we uh, know, how can we ensure the quality and reliability of the cells that if our cells are good enough, uh, safety wise, quality wise? So if you will look at the systems, there is all systems are available for testing before using the cells or maybe to validate the cells before using the cells. But what we see in India, people are in quite hurry to make the products and sometimes are skipping a lot of the manufacturing processes which are required. Otherwise, by doing the major tests on the battery cells in production, normally we do cycling test. By doing the cycling test, we know most of the features of the cells. Because if you will see the technical things, what I know is, this electronic components or batteries. You need to first do the testing at the initial stage. If the battery fails at the initial or the electronic components fails either in the initial stages or they perform well during their life or they start misbehaving when there is the end of life. So the initial testing or initial validating or initial aging, which we call as aging, is very important for doing the on the cells maybe one cycle, two cycle or three cycles, then you can solve at least 90-95% of the problems and you will know 90-95% of the behaviors of how the cells will perform. There's things you can do at the lab levels or at the validation levels when the cells are manufactured or when the cells are validated on the actual simulation by doing the actual simulations on the use basis. And Karthik, what else, no, what else instruments do we need to adopt electric, the fast adoption of electric vehicle market in India? So one of the first things, I'm since I'm invested in data, I would say one of the first things is data across the entire spectrum of things. So right from cell manufacturing, where some sort of a traceability to where the cells are being manufactured, how they are manufactured, like the material content, uh, everything. Two, let's say the cell formation as well. The first few cycles is very important to understand exactly how the formation cycle works. And maybe if some sort of initial testing, uh, Neeraj was talking about, if that is done, like data from that. Because there are several studies which talk about like a lot of confidence being built up on the initial few cycles that help you predict exactly how long the cells will last. That's one. Of course, this data is going to be used by different stakeholders differently, right? So to the end customer, it gives you an index of how uh, safe the battery pack is, reliability, longevity, etc. And also that could be used to create a second-hand battery market as well. Second-hand battery as well as second-hand vehicle market. Of course, there are a lot of financial intermediaries as well. So uh, right now, uh, your finance rates are super high because your asset or the people, the people risk is thoroughly quantified. People have been doing it for ages now. But the asset risk is still very, very unquantified. So operational data can help kind of quash some of that uh, um, financial rates as well. And your LTVs are very, very low at this point of time, which means you have to put a lot of money up front to get the vehicle. So like some sort of confidence on operational data and how an asset is performing will also help uh, insurance and warranty providers to like, you know, create a proper portfolio, optimize their risks. And uh, ultimately, it's all about residual value. Uh, we were in the last two days. We hear about a lot of about our manufacturing of cells in India, but cells are already produced in China in high quality, high performance, and very high volumes. So to make just copy paste in a small factory in uh, in India can be pretty challenging. So to my understanding, the innovations is needed here in, in this field. Uh, 
one of the key elements in the batteries, uh, what, can what can be improved, is the performance at, at high environmental temperature, performance with high current. So here, all about is about the heat. Heat dissipation can be a key. So maybe, Apur, if you could provide some elements about uh, what kind of innovation we could expect on the, on the cell level or in, in the cell chemistries in order to reduce the heat generation within the cells. So, uh, first of all, right, I mean, heat generation is a, is a problem where uh, the cells are degrading. The reason why they are degrading is because we are wasting um, energy as heat. That energy is actually fueling certain unwanted chemical reactions inside your cell. If we do not have that heat in the first place, or it's not available, those chemical reactions will obviously not happen, right? So uh, what we need to do is figure out a way so that that energy is not available for those unwanted reactions in these cells, uh, one way or another. So the easiest way people have always worked on this is uh, try and remove the heat, have cooling solutions. We have seen a lot in terms of liquid cooling. Now we are talking about submerged cooling where the cells are directly in contact with the liquids and so on. Uh, there's the other side of it where people work a lot on uh, making chemicals more resistant to those reactions. You don't, you, your electrolytes are more resistant to the reactions. We have those additives which uh, make sure that that reaction is not happening even if the heat is present. Uh, I believe that there's a third way. Uh, the third way is that the heat should not be generated in the first place. Uh, and it has got a lot to do with the way the cells are designed, the, the physical design, the mechanical design of the cell stack itself. Uh, one thing we, again, like I'll probably take you through a little bit of the history of lithium ion battery cells and how they were developed. Uh, the formats that we see today, the cylindrical winding or the, uh, the prismatic winding of cells, they came about because that was the technology available back in 1990. And that technology was used to make uh, video cassettes. Now it is borrowed and it was used to make battery cells and it has gone through for the past 30 years because it was good enough for those applications. It was good enough for laptops, cameras, mobile phones, but when we start looking at electric vehicles, a much higher, uh, uh, more demanding application in terms of power, in terms of faster charging, uh, those kind of winding designs don't actually work out for us, right? Uh, so essentially what we have is I have a cylindrical cell and I have my current which is going round and round instead of just going straight through, which would be my most efficient pathway. So there's a lot of play uh, available when we want to design cells. We can design them very differently uh, so that the internal resistance of the cell that cells comes down. And by doing that, we are essentially saying that, hey, now our cells are inherently more energy efficient. There will be less heat generated because at the end of the day, if it's cooling, right? Uh, say we are in India, the temperature is like 35 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's already hot the energy is being generated as heat and uh, before it is removed, a part of it is still going to take part in those reactions. If it's not generated in the first place, it's going to be way better as compared to, you know, fundamentally better in terms of its life, its safety. Uh, you can actually charge faster and still get better life. So uh, there's a lot of play in design. Uh, we can actually make batteries lighter in terms of design as well. Uh, so today's batteries, I mean, if we, if we look at the lithium ion phosphate batteries, there's about 50% dead mass. If we are playing with design, we actually have the avenue where we can reduce a lot of that dead mass without changing chemistry and get much higher energy density battery cells uh, from, the, from the same uh, chemistry itself. And it's been well understood. People have worked on it for decades. Uh, so we don't actually have to make huge changes in chemistry. Uh, Vishal, you know, like all the countries are different. All the countries have some advantages, challenges, drivers, yeah. So what do you think that how India is different from other countries in terms of uses pattern or geography or geopolitical issues? And what are the main requirements? Yeah, so if we really want to grow electric vehicle market in India, how do you know what we need to learn, what we need to do, do so that we can, you know, strongly 
uh, gain this electric vehicle market in India. Correct. Uh, so uh, in the beginning, Apoor touched this upon slightly already that the average temperature of India is not 25 degrees centigrade. So typically what we are doing, the cells which are built, they are being built outside the country, uh, suited for those applications, right? For European countries and all. A typical example is solid state batteries, right? Solid state batteries pretty work pretty well in the higher temperatures because the resistance goes down. So what we have to do in country that we have to design things for a specific our needs, not just copy paste because that's a habit what we have, what has been there, let's use as it is and just implement it and then try to tinker around it by cooling the system, by doing something like that. Each and everything what you see uh, and especially when the new technology comes in, uh, it's an area of AI, right? But if you see as a country which is very strong in IIT, we are not doing AI also. We are still following. Same thing is happening for EV, which is for the hardcore engineering application. We are trying to adopt the thing, not innovate the things. We have to have systems as well as engineers who can innovate the things for engineering needs for our application. This is something what we need for higher temperature. Uh, apart from that, uh, Apu, uh, other I think people talked about recycling and all those things. And see, everyone knows that the lithium metal as a, this one, right? It's highly controlled by China. The ecosystem supply chain is completely dependent. Uh, still, if you see that people thought will we start building the sodium ion batteries? But still, are we ahead? No. We are still behind from sodium ion batteries also. Right? Beat potassium and battery. So we are very bad in innovation. That's something unless we don't change and we don't think for designing. See, I always tell to other people, I was telling to my co-founder Lokesh also while, while coming on the way. The total population, out of one-fifth population of complete world is in India. See, you have the biggest market here itself. First, you design the system for this country, then export to other places. You have the biggest market opportunity here. Do you have to innovate for this country first? That's my thought process on this. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Very nice insight. Yeah. If I may add on that, uh, okay, I mean, for the past decade and a half, you know, it used to be very frustrating that we have not been doing enough research and development on battery technology. But looking back at it today, I would say probably a good thing because we have seen what mistakes others have made. We can probably avoid those as well. But yeah, I mean, I agree. We, we really need to pull up our socks when it comes to research and development. Thank you. I see a lot of uh, young people here in the hall. So I think it would be very interesting to understand uh, what is the potential for such kind of uh, uh, such a young people here or other young people that are finishing the studies uh, in India. Uh, we here, here in, the, in the panel, we have the people, we have the panelists that are from startup companies, that are from well-established companies already. So it would be very interesting to hear an opinion about what is missing in terms of skills or skilled people uh, to drive your business better, to run the innovations better, and uh, to bring uh, more uh, jobs and more manufacturing and more uh, innovations to India. I'll add to this, uh, as an education system, uh, we lag in the deep dive approach, the first principle thought process. The education system is very much commercialized in India. People take degree to get a job. They upskill themselves to get a promotion. See, that thought process has to change first place. You have, if you are an engineer, your first thought process should to be innovate the things. Your first thought process, okay, shall I do something which can, I can innovate? I can solve a problem. Even a startup should have a thought process of solving the problem, not earning money and becoming very big valuation company, right? Even the big companies like uh, Tata's, Mahindra, they have huge pockets, but even they scare away from investing in innovation. That is actually killing the innovation in India, right? And from the skilling perspective, the, the education system has to slightly change by prioritizing not the people who score the highest marks. 
in iits like education system if you see we are hiring people based on their only exams how much score you did no prioritize people not only based on that you have should have some kind of limits for people who are innovating as well there are multiple people in the country who are actually building drones in their school times who actually want to build the things right so skills should be given priority and the technical know how should be given priority and the first principle problem solving approach should be given priority over your marks and as a education system as as a hiring system should change as we see recently uh, uh us also announced something that they are not going to hire people only based on their degrees they are going to change and make the vocational training and they are going to hire based on the trainings and your skill set that is important so people should think about skilling themselves and going deep dive on the like for suppose cell chemistry in india people know very less about cell chemistry cell fundamental cell design it's very deep topic it's very very deep topic and uh, we also provide training programs corporate training people say on the first day out of when i ask them to rate themselves out of 5 they rate themselves 4 5 after three classes of when i take the sessions their rating goes i know only one on the day one so my rating was actually if i rate myself back in the time my rating was less than one after taking your sessions so people don't know what they don't know <laughs> so that's upskillment is required at the very large scale yeah. right and complete ecosystem it's a ecosystem as i again told the education systems the corporates the startup and as well as complete ecosystem country has to evolve to innovate the things not just be commercially this one that is important that will come any which ways the three idiot movie i'm just concluding with this that kamyab uh, bano kamyab jhak maar ke piche aayegi right so kamyab becoming success becoming uh, skilled is more important okay thank you vishal so we need first hard work we need first engineers and only then promotion and uh, high level managers so i think the message is clear here uh any other comments about the skills that are missing uh, we speak about a lot about battery chemistries but uh, the battery systems and electric vehicles are not only about uh, the skills in chemistry of the battery there are also other skills that are missing maybe on simulation heat dissipation some electronic skills uh, mechanical skill mechatronic skills so any other comments i can add that means what we had seen from outside world there are a lot of r&ds at the company level and lot of r&ds are supported by the governments so means before because otherwise how you will learn you cannot learn from just reading the books that's the major thing so means all these things are quite evolving so means we need to have very solid r&ds at the corporate level or the company levels and also supported by the government levels where in the people can be trained so until unless we have the manufacturing here in india how the people means people in masses can be trained so means if you will see the china byd started in two, before 2000 at that time the sell price was 2000 dollar per kilowatt the chinese government supported them or whatever they are producing the government is buying and deploying so means this is how they built so now they have around 30000 r&d engineers very well qualified skilled one company and i don't think that whole india is having 30000 engineers r&d and qualified like one company in china is having so means lot of things are required to be done at corporate and government level if we are serious about it but means to be serious in india cost needs you need lot of money and lot of policy support which is always missing here in india so most of these things are just driven by commercial interests which means uh, maybe quite different or short term or maybe approach is very different this is my take on it uh, completely agree on that so uh, again like when you are when you are trying to hire people and like in a startup we have we have we need people who can come in on day one and hit the ground running but uh the, there are a couple of things missing you know one as he said you know the knowledge of chemistry of battery chemistry is how batteries work uh the fundamentals of you know what's actually happening inside that cell that's missing uh so to a certain extent that comes in when people are doing their you know uh postgraduate research phd's and so on 
but then the other part that gets missing over there is uh, the more practical aspects how do you make these batteries you know what's what's the economics behind it you don't you should not just run after uh, some fancy goal that you know i want to understand everything about it uh, you that could actually run down the business as well you know so that that middle ground has to be there where you have the basics and understanding but at the same time also the the practical operational challenges that come into uh, you know running a business on manufacturing as well my uh, I, i just one point on this my mentor is there he uh, i generally call him uh, for giving some sessions uh, so he says that engineer is a person who makes commercial viable product by innovation so engineer responsibility is not to just read the books and say okay this is good or this is bad no your responsibility is to make a product which is commercial viable that is how the china is ahead of us and today's engineering does not okay you have to be a mechanical engineer you have to be an electrical engineer it's multi diverse it's multi disciplinary approach you are supposed to know mechanical engineering you are supposed to know electrical engineering you are supposed to know coding it has to be combined in single person is more of a mechatronics rather than only pure domains and people should actually learn about this not just going behind and okay now ai is a boom let everyone learn ai it does not happen that way see those things are transformatory uh, sometime uh, iit field will be there some new trend will come manufacturing takes time takes time to build the hard core engineering takes time to build but it stays with you it took 20 years for china to reach that stage they have not reached immediate like this right so we have as a country have to think about it think in long term mid to long term and then plan strategies accordingly so that we can reach that level in at least 10 years now we are already behind 10 20 years from other countries in that innovation especially in china because they appreciate product based approach in engineering not just theoretical approach so please any any comments or maybe gandhi you would like to add any comments so i completely agree with what apurv said and avishal said as well so a, com- a a comprehensive course needs to be kind of taught in engineering colleges so that you understand different aspects of different things i think ngs at this point of time especially coming out of bachelor's degrees cannot afford to be like you know specializing in a certain topic they need to be generalist they need to understand a bit of everything while kind of focusing on uh specializing in one thing i've seen a lot of ai engineers come out like they completely forget the technical aspects of things they're just using ai to kind of solve everything so that's uh, yeah something we've seen i would add uh you know there is a lot of innovation already happening in india uh, so a lot of engineers and you know those skill sets are required uh from a technical point of view i would say we still need to invest a lot into uh virtual testings virtual validation so that is one additional skill set that i can just add on to all the other important ones that the team has already mentioned uh why because you know with all these ideas it takes a lot of money to actually test them out and you can't really afford every point of time so virtual testing virtual software simulations analysis you know that is going to help us to bring lot of those innovations into life much much faster and much lower cost i still see today lot of oems lot of suppliers they are dependent on their global headquarters or global counterparts elsewhere for testing validations uh simulation so all of that is still dependent uh, on the knowledge elsewhere out of india so that is another area of uh, technical skill sets that uh, we can definitely improvise last i would only add upon a non technical skill set i would say always have an attitude of challenging the status quo or getting into cautioning mode i would say the entire value of this panel is 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 coming out of our moderators who are putting those you know thoughtful questions so that the right challenges are or you know right challenges that the team is going through has been posed and that knowledge is brought about from from the speakers to the audience so having that questioning mode challenging the status quo every now and then will help us to get deeper into things that we are not aware of and eventually will bring it more innovations into life thank you thank you and i think it was very uh, very nice very interesting information to hear for you So I would like to do a small exercise here. So I hope everybody is listening very very carefully. So we will do a kind of a round trip with the panelists and I would ask kindly the panelists provide 
three keywords that they would, uh, they would search or they'd look for in the uh, curriculum vitae of the potential candidate. So, so please just imagine you are hiring, you are offering a very good salary, and you are uh, prom uh, offering also the possibility to get the promotion to a high level manager, but not immediately. And uh, what will be, you, you are reading a lot of CVs, a lot of candidates, because India is a lot of people, so a lot of skilled engineers are going out of the school, and you will get hundreds of curriculum vitae on the table, and you have to go rapidly through and look for keywords that will attract your attention, and those will be the people you will invite for your job appointment. So please, if you can provide three, four keywords you will look for in the CV. That means I normally try to find the people when we are searching that how curious the person is. One is the curiosity. Second is the quick learner because nobody comes what you need. So means you need to train. So means we try to look at how much quick learner the person is. Thirdly means I look at reliability factor that okay, yes, how much perseverance he may be having, how much reliability he will be having, how much longer time he can work consistently on solving one problem if it's not getting solved easily. Uh, so from the keywords when you asked, I generally see number of things the person have done. So uh, a, a good a good indicator for me is already if they have feather in hats. If they have already done a couple of projects, they have been doing hustling in their own college time or other projects and all. So that is a good indicator that they are a hustler. They will be keep on putting efforts to learn something new. So number of projects, first thing, whatever, independent project, internship, whatever you have done, and that's first thing. Second thing is the keywords. If you have mentioned that you have solved this or you have built this, so building approach, that means you are a hands-on person. You're not just a person that who have just learned that came out of college. Okay, I build this, I solve this. So these are the keywords for me because it, since we're an engineering company, there are different, different roles, software or uh, a technical role or other things. How much keen you are. Third thing as uh, Niraji also mentioned is a character that is known by their bottom portion of the CV, what they do in their part time, what their hobbies are, right? So are they a person who is a, a, a NGO, he's going in NGO, he's supporting some So those things only, uh, the three areas which we saw, two are technical part of it, one is a behavioral part of it. Okay, I'll just uh, make this very quick. You said I have to imagine, I don't have to imagine. I'm, I've been in the hiring mode for the past six months. <laughs> uh, so very quickly, you know, energy levels. Uh, one low person in the room can actually bring down the entire room. In a, in a startup, you need to have a very fast-paced environment. Energy level is one desire and ability to learn. Uh, again, like projects come into the picture, how well did they understand their projects? Right, it's not just what you did because the project is more often than not given by the college, but like how well, how much did you try to learn about the background? How much did you try to understand why it works and how, how to make it work? And lastly, a little bit of maturity because uh, we're working on cell manufacturing. Uh, People with a lot of energy trying to experiment too much can burn down the house. So <laughs> a little bit of maturity. So I, I mean, most of the points are already covered, but um, in essence, I would look at uh, breadth of knowledge and experience. Uh, curiosity is very important and um, passion, focus and desire to learn. So that's not evident from the CV, but like, you know, on speaking with a person, you understand. Thank you. Uh, I would say I'll bucket this into two, obviously, uh, and I don't really prefer, you know, uh, filtering out people on uh, just keywords or just from resumes. I, I prefer to interact with people. Uh, but uh, just on resumes, if a few keywords, technically, we look forward for people from EMF industry, you know, electronic industry background. We look for people uh, with, uh, you know, battery and EV ecosystem related uh, work experience and technical skills around that. In terms of, uh, you know, non-technical skills, uh, 
you know, besides what has already been added, uh, what has already been mentioned, I would add uh, resilience as a very, very important skill set that we look at because times are very dynamic. Uh, technologies are much more faster evolving now versus any time in the past. Resilience to, you know, uh, move around with the technology, move around with failure, move around with success is something that we really uh, focus upon. Thank you. Uh, Manu, one hour is not enough, actually. So do you think... Uh, the you work, the whole day of... won't be enough, but I can only give you, say, two, three two, minutes two more. Two minutes just to read. Yeah, so yeah, 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 please. One or two please. questions from I've already audience. added five more, so you, you okay. can see the extra okay, time going on. So actually, we are at a time, if we are running out, so we can just take one or two questions from uh, our audience. If anybody has any questions, please you can raise your hand. Does anyone have any questions for the panel here? Please feel free. If nobody, then we can ask our, our panelists to, you know, just give us. Okay, I have, I have one question. Okay. I've been listening to what all you were saying. And the challenge is, you know, it is true. I want to buy an electric vehicle. But I live in a society in Noida. And where do I get a charging port? Right? I am a lady. I have to drive the whole day. The number of hours that required. Then where will I put it? Because parkings, you know how basement parkings work in societies, right? So where will we get the charger installed? What will be the cost? Will the AOA, which is the owner's you know, association, society association approve for it? A lot of challenges. So, uh, I mean, which, whichever one of you thinks that, uh, you know, you want to answer it. I would want to know, when do you think practically it will be possible for me to smoothly be able to make this dream into a reality because we're really worried about the pollution levels in the cities. That is a major concern and I know that it comes from vehicles majorly. So, please feel free so, to answer. Before that, a bit of background. So, there was a survey conducted in 2023 which talked about the lack of, uh, like, you know, high levels of adoption of electric vehicles being number one, lack of charging infra. And second was safety. Yeah. So again, your uh, concern basically addresses both. Yes, so if I'm yes. charging my electric vehicle inside an association, mm. how, well, like, you know, will it catch fire? That's the yes. question. No, 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 no. So I'm not worried about the fire. No, I'm more worried about when do I get that charging port? So at least I'll be able to charge it, right? Right. Uh, so more availability, like it should be available. Like we have our phone chargers. That's the kind of availability we're looking for when it comes to cars, right? Because we're using them every day. In short, I, I don't think your problem is lack of charging infra at this point. It is just lack of uptime of charging infra. So there are several apps right now. I can actually count about 25, 30 apps, which help you in discovery of charging infra. So where you can go and charge your vehicle is something that is available. But okay. the problem is once you go over there, is it actually available to you? Is it uh, like, you know, for simple reasons, what Apoorv is working on is a fast charging battery in simple words, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if that is not available right now, which essentially means that there are two, uh, there are three possibilities right now. So one is if you go to a public charging station, either it is out of commission or you see a vehicle which is already charging or be prepared to charge for about like, you know, half an hour to 40 minutes, like, you know, get yourself a sandwich, whatever. So that's going to happen mm -hmm. for sure. But going forward, I think when fast charging batteries do come in, uh, it's going to be a lot easier, right? When, it's, when? I would say about five to seven years. So it's, five it's the chicken and pro egg problem. Okay. Right? Everybody talks about it. Okay, okay. So if right now... So then I'll plan accordingly then. Sticking no, to petrol will, for I now. Let, <laughs> I will let in all new buildings yeah. or societies, it is mandatory to put the charging infrastructure. It, it it's is? It's all about the old buildings where the, it is taking much more time. Mm. So means just try to shift to your home, mm. you will get the <laughs> readily charging points there. That is a lot of investment for a car. <laughs> but thank you so much. I think I will plan then five years, after five years, Karthik, so that, you know, it's like Maybe at the click of a button, I am charging and moving. Yes, yes. I think please. that will not solve the problem even after five years. I'll tell you why. You'll have to keep the mic towards yeah. you. Yeah. Even I bought the electric. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to buy a car, but again, the charging, because I, uh, I recently migrated, uh, shifted to Bangalore. And I was shifting very quite uh, oftenly. Hmm. It was not making sense to that, get the port installed and all those things. As you mentioned, our owners associations and all those things hmm. are also there. Hmm. See, the problem is the way we are thinking about charging infrastructure hmm. is to replace the petrol pumps. Hmm. That is a problem. 
Hmm. We are trying to make charging infra as a concentrated again. Hmm. See, electricity is available everywhere. Yeah, yeah. We have to think charging infrastructure as you rightly mentioned. Phone chargers, mobile. portable. Yeah. If portable, we can get that, that will be heaven. Yeah, portability is one thing. Second thing is distributed charging infra. Why yeah. not the parking spot? What you have? Yes. Right. Yes. You can have that. And second thing, as Mr. Viraji uh, also mentioned, if you see the new, uh, as per the uh, uh, government norms, hmm. the new buildings which are getting constructed, they should have solar panels. Mm. There should be a government move. Whatever buildings are getting constructed should have charging infra. Mm. A concern, so that will distribute the charging load. Mm. Agreed. Right? Yeah. And every shopping, uh, if you see every charging point, every charging location, petrol was not easily portable, right? You yeah. cannot put yeah. every location a fuel mm. pump. But mm. you can put a charging point everywhere. Yeah. yeah so yeah. the charging infra has to be distributed rather yes. than concentrated. That also keeping the population in mind that needs to be done. You're right. Yes. So that Look at the population we have. Classical example is CNG filling. If people mm -hmm. who have CNG, that takes how much time? Five minutes, ten minutes, do you think? And how much big line? Imagine yeah, look at the queue the, there. That's how, population again. Imagine how all the vehicle being sitting in the charging port, same mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And even ten minutes will be huge in that scenario. Mm -hmm. So the concentrated charging infrastructure will not solve the problem. It's a distributed charging infrastructure will solve the problem. Yeah. You have okay. to think charging okay. infrastructure completely in completely new way. I think Milan's trying to say something for I, a very I'm long very time. sorry, but we are running a, a little bit of time. So we we are very talkative panelists. It's very good. You have a lot of insightful information to share with audience. So I would uh, like to invite audience also to continue the discussion after the panel to go. To, the, to our panelists and to ask them questions, to ask what are the job opportunities there or what are the innovations. So you can be a potential uh, employee, you can be a potential partner, you can be a potential customer for them. So do not hesitate to continue the discussion. I would like to thank you again for all the info information you provided to our audience for very nice and dynamic discussion. And I hope we will see you again next year at the Battery Show. Thank you. Definitely looking forward to it. Thank you so much, everyone. That was a very insightful and very intriguing discussion that I just witnessed. And to show that we really appreciate you taking out the time to be here with us and share your knowledge with us. We would like to felicitate each one of you and uh, with a token of our appreciation, which is a memento. And for that felicitation, I would like to call upon stage none other than one of the best from our Informa market teams, Mr. Prashant Rubello. A huge round of applause for Mr. Prashant Rubello, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, I know you can clap louder. So the first person that I would like to invite forward for the felicitation is, let's start with you, Milan. So that is Mr. Milan Rosina, who's the principal analyst, power electronics and battery. Smile for the camera, let's capture these moments. And yes, please feel free to clap and appreciate. <laughs> The next panelist that I would like to call forward is Mr. Apoor Shaligram, co-founder and CEO, ETRNL Energy. Huge round of applause for the gentleman. The next panelist that I would like to call forward is Dr. Neeraj Kumar Singhal, founder, Semco Group, Lithium Ilsen and Battery Manufacturing and Testing Solutions. Next, I would like to call forward Mr. Satvinder Singh Sabarwal, Director, India Sales and Marketing, NOV. Next, I would like to call forward Mr. Karthik Ganesh, Director, Battery Systems, Turner. Calling forward our final panelist, Mr. Vishal Ahuja, co-founder, Techlands.
and last but definitely not the least our lovely moderator the lady sitting right next to me dr shalu agarwal senior technology and market analyst power electronics yol intelligence part of yol group Now I would like to request everyone to please step forward with your mementos for a group photograph it is very important to capture these moments so that we can look at them as fond memories please stand together for a group photograph and smile for the camera